You're listening to the Integrated Music Teaching Podcast from Top Music. Tune in weekly as we interview music teachers and experts from around the world to explore creative activities and ideas that build learning connections in students. Our integrated music teaching approach will deepen your students' understanding of musical concepts, engage them in critical thinking, improve their reading and performance, foster their curiosity, and prepare them for a lifetime of music making. Hi there, teachers. It's Tim here, and welcome back to the Integrated Music Teaching Podcast. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode, and I hope you grabbed our freebie. It's our brilliant, brand new, amazing ultimate guide to intermediate student curriculum planning. I know that's a mouthful, but trust me, this is a download you're going to want to get. It's totally free. It's available over at topmusic.co slash curriculum. And today's episode, I'm going to be handing over very shortly to the amazing Jenna Williamson, our intermediate repertoire specialist here at Top Music. She is going to be talking about how she uses this guide with one of her students. In fact, we're going to be looking at one particular type of student this week and how, particularly how she sets goals and milestones. And then we're going to be hearing uh, about another type of student next week. So, we've got two weeks coming up looking at case studies of how you can use the Intermediate Students Guide in your studio. I think having these case studies and listening to them will really make clear how you can get most out of the ultimate guide that we've created. Jenna Williamson is a highly sought after teacher of students of all levels with two decades of professional teaching experience. She maintains a home studio in West Chicago and taught at the Wheaton Yamaha Music School from 2001 to 2020. She has been an MTNA nationally certified teacher of music since 2004 and holds bachelor's and master's degrees in piano performance. Jenna enjoys performing solo or collaboratively and can be heard throughout the Chicago area on a regular basis. This week, you'll be hearing about Jenna's student, Amy, and the challenges she's felt around setting up the right curriculum for her. And then next week, we'll use another example student, again, putting the frameworks and guides in the free curriculum planning ebook to practical use. Okay, let's hand it over to Jenna. Hello, top music teachers. If we haven't met before, my name is Jana Williamson, and you might know me from the piece by piece series that I do every month covering a piece of historical intermediate repertoire. Today, I actually want to do a slightly different video and talk about setting student goals, particularly in the intermediate level. You may have already seen the ultimate guide that Tim and I wrote about curriculum planning, particularly in the intermediate levels. And today I wanna to give you an example of how might I might do that with one particular student. I'm gonna call this student Amy today, okay? And that's not her actual name, but she is one of my real students that I'm using an example from. And right now at the end of the school year in 2023, she has just completed her fourth year of lessons with me, but she came to me as a transfer, I believe at the age of nine. And I will say that the instruction that she had prior to coming to me was a little bit subpar in that I think she was studying with a teacher using the piano adventures method and it was a very much a you know turn the page approach she did not have good rhythmic skills and i would say that that's in general something that she struggles with overall however she's a student who practices so once she came to me she was diligent about doing what i asked her to do i would say it took me about two years to really get to know her to figure out exactly what all the gaps were in her learning to get her a little bit more excited about what she was doing, to figure out what was motivating to her. She's definitely an introverted student, so it took me a little time to get there. Then in her third year of study with me, she was definitely playing early intermediate. Maybe you could qualify one or two things that she played as a mid-intermediate, but in that spring recital in 2022, she played the Clementi Opus 36, number one, first movement, and then a lovely lyrical piece by Dennis Alexander. So I would qualify both of them as on the top level of early intermediate, if that makes sense. Prior to that point, I'd been continuing to use the piano adventures method as well as supplementing with some music that she already had at home. I was trying not to purchase a lot of music when they already had some things from other family members studying, but I didn't really like the book that she had some historical rep in, the one that we were using for the Clementi Sonatina. And I will say that in March of 2023, she played that Clementi Sonatina in a recital and she had a disastrous memory slip. We have all had those. <laughs> you and I have been there. I assume that you've had disastrous memory slips in your life in the past. 
But it became clear to me that there were still some holes in her understanding of how to prepare for performance and how to memorize. And I will say she was generally a good sight reader. And you may know that with your students who are good sight readers, they tend to struggle more with memorization than those who don't read as well. So at the end of that school year 2022, I decided to make a plan for what her next year would look like, that I was going to really be a little bit more of an active leader in this because it it really was time and I was seeing enough problems. So first of all, I decided we were going to go with a book that I liked better, that I felt more comfortable teaching. And so I gave her the Masterwork Classics Level 5. And I just love this series. It's actually the first one I recommend to teachers who want to try a graded intermediate series. It's the first one on my list. It's the easiest to use. And I knew that going from the previous repertoire she had done at that early intermediate level, that this would be the right next step for her. Secondarily, I made the goal for the next year to be that we were going to learn how to memorize. And I knew that part of this was she, because she was a good reader, she wasn't just repeating enough times in her practice and she wasn't doing enough analysis. She wasn't paying attention to what her left hand was doing, what chords she was playing, what broken chord patterns were being outlined with her left hand. And that we need to do some more ear training and general ear development because she wasn't really listening all the time and her ear wasn't being drawn to particularly her left hand or the bass line, anything aside from the top melody. So at the end of the year 2022, those were all the things that I was thinking about for the next year. So this past year, the from the fall of 2022 to this spring 2023, that's exactly what we did. She spent the year working through, I would say about 50% of that Masterwork Classics Level 5, which is about the amount that I want my students to do. Uh, It might have been slightly under or above that. I'm not looking at her, her list of completed pieces this year. Hi, everyone. I wanted to take a moment to let you know about an amazing community of music teachers ready to welcome you over at Top Music Pro. Top Music Pro is the global hub for music teachers looking to connect, learn, grow, and be challenged in both their teaching and studio businesses. Community members save time by accessing hundreds of step-by-step lesson plans, creative teaching frameworks, business guides, online courses, and workshops. We offer training in topics as diverse as music technique, lead sheets, website building, intermediate repertoire, group teaching, and special needs teaching. We also save you money through our extensive discounts, including those with Music Notes, Sheet Music Plus, Music Room, Office Depot, Tonebase, and many more. And if you like sheet music, all our members get a free book of studio licensed, beautifully engraved sheet music each and every month. As a valued podcast listener, you can check out the Top Music Pro community free for 14 days by heading to topmusicpro.com, clicking join now on our studio tier, and using the special coupon code IMTPOD23. That's all one word. So that's IMTPOD23. We can't wait to welcome you inside. And she completed level six of the Illinois AIM curriculum, which is the exam system that I use here, which is perfectly lined up with the repertoire that was in that book. So that was the right level for her. And she had done level five the year before as her first level in the exam system. So I knew I had a little bit of support as far as her written theory and ear training, and that that would be a good milestone for her. The way our exam system works is that the theory practical examination, which includes sight reading and harmonization and oral skills and a written theory test, that happens in the fall in October, and then the performance exam happens in March. So I knew that I had until March to really improve her memorization skills because she was gonna go take that performance exam. So along with the repertoire that I gave her that was at her level in that new book, I also told her, we're gonna work on memorization. And I said, the easiest way for us to do this is by starting with pieces that are below your level so that the analysis is really easy and so that you can really understand every single part of these pieces and be able to remember every single part. It's not too complex. It's not technically difficult. So I gave her a book and I, off the top of my head, I think it was one of the Martha Muir romantic impressions. And it was definitely about two levels below her current playing level. Those pieces were pieces she could learn in one week, you know, and really understand. But each time I gave her one of those, I let her choose, 
we would look at right away before she played anything, what was happening in the left hand? What chords were being used as the underlying harmony? How did the left hand and the right hand interact? And I even asked her to do some left hand alone work so that she could memorize the left hand specifically and have that be as well learned as the right hand. So each time she got through one of those easy pieces and memorized it within a short period of time, only three or four weeks of study, that was achieving a goal. So I think that kind of sums up what my ideas were for her and how I applied those throughout the year with specific goals and milestones. The milestones being the exams that she took, the individual pieces that she memorized, and then of course working on not just those easy pieces to memorize, but the bigger pieces that she then performed in her exam in March, which by the way, she did so well on. She memorized all three of her pieces that she had to play, even though she only was required to memorize two. And she told me afterwards that she felt very confident with her memory and she got a great exam score. She went on to play really well from memory at our studio recitals in May and all that. So that was another milestone, another opportunity for her to perform and evaluate how much more comfortable she felt with memorization. So to go back to the three-step process that Tim and I gave you in that ultimate guide, the first one is very broad, and that's to set goals for what your student would be able to do at the end of the intermediate period. And for this particular student, I wanted her to improve her repertoire playing ability and to play harder repertoire, you know, to get to that upper intermediate level eventually. But in this year, I wanted her to use repertoire that I thought would be a good vehicle for her learning, as well as focus on that memorization ability, not just so she could play from memory, but so that she could really integrate her theory knowledge and her ear training. Second, we suggest that you plan meaningful milestones along the way. So the annual milestones that, that this student Amy had this past year were the exam completion, as well as being able to perform well from memory, both in the exam as well as in my end of year studio recital in May. Then the third step in that process is to choose learning activities and repertoire that will support those goals. And you already heard me uh, discuss how I did that. We chose easier repertoire underneath her current ability level as well as did ear training activities and all kinds of other things so that we could work towards that ability to integrate her functional skills with her repertoire and be able to memorize effectively. Now, you may not have that same goal of memorization for your students, which is totally fine. I'm simply using that as one area that I saw my student, the, the memorization in the student studio recital in 2022 was really that litmus test that showed me something is missing in this student's understanding of what is actually underneath, what the bottom of the iceberg is below her ability to play repertoire and to read music. And so those were those smaller milestones and goals that I gave her. I hope this gives you a perspective on how you could do this with any student based on any goals and specific issues that you're seeing, something that's missing in their playing, as well as just thinking more broadly across the intermediate years and how you might help your students set goals. Well, if you haven't downloaded your free guide yet, just head over to topmusic.co slash curriculum. And note that when you download, you'll also get the chance to access the video recordings of Jana at the piano from this episode and next week's as she puts the guide into practice. It can be a really great reference to actually watch her. And uh, we've added some overlays and notes and things like that so that you can get a real sense for what's going on. So, that's an opportunity that you can take after you've downloaded the free guide. Next week on the show, we're going to be sharing the second case study with Jana, and that's all about a student called Ella. We'll meet her next week. How do you keep up to date with all the latest trends and research into music education? How do you connect with other teachers around the world and make sure your teaching stays fresh and relevant for students of all ages and stages both now and into the future? I created our Top Music Pro membership to be the one-stop shop for music teaching resources, training, support and community and I'd love for you to come and join us inside. With over 40 comprehensive training courses, hundreds of teaching demonstrations and lesson plans, free monthly sheet music, discounts and all the business and pedagogy support you could ever need, Top Music Pro is the community you've been looking for. 
If you're ready to level up your learning from the podcast and join thousands of other teachers in our global network, head over to topmusicpro.com today. If you enjoy this show and want to hear more of our work, be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening today. For links and resources mentioned in this episode, visit us at topmusic.co slash podcast or check out the show notes. I'm Tim Topham and this is the Integrated Music Teaching Podcast, a production of Top Music. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy your week ahead and I'll catch you next time.